Hi, everyone, and welcome. We're going to start in a couple of minutes, and uh, I'll just introduce Manmeet, and then I'll hand over the reins to her. She's going to talk to us about finding clients today. Um, and I'm especially very excited to see how this session goes. More so because just yesterday, we finished our um, second cohort of membership. Uh, so there are like 20 people who are like raring to go uh, to find new clients to, you know, <laughs> get their business started. And I'm sure a lot of uh, insights, they'll be getting a lot of insights from um, and me today. So great, we have lots of people joining in. I'll just do a quick introduction and we'll get started. Um, and if you're here, say hi, tell us where you're from. If you have any questions, you can put them in the Q&A uh, box. If you can see, uh, there's a strip below uh, with a Q&A option. Put questions there, not in the chat, because otherwise we'll lose track of them and we'll answer them uh, as we go or towards the end of the session, right? Um, great. So uh, thank you for joining us, Manmeet. Uh, it's amazing to have you here. Uh, for those of you who don't know her, Manmeet is a marketing expert uh, and she's the founder of WebEasy, again, a digital marketing company. She's here because she's got this knack for creating conversations that translate into conversions, okay? And that's uh, an ethos I totally resonate with and that's you know, uh, what has helped me build my business as well. Uh, creating lasting client relationships. So um, Manmeet founded WebEasy in 2019, and she's worked uh, uh, she's worked on this company that's basically founded on relationship, trust, and credibility. Uh, she's worked with over 20 clients in this time frame, and today she brings in over 60 lakhs in annual revenue. Uh, so I think that's a phenomenal achievement. And I'm very curious, and she works with both Indian and international clients, especially those based in the U.S., so I'm very excited to see uh, what we can learn from her today in terms of finding and retaining clients and how do we have those you know, conversations that convert. So uh, thanks, Manmeet, and over to you. Thank you so much, Safriya. I really love the way you've summed up everything because that is going to be the core of the presentation. That is building relationships and then growing the business. So thank you so much for a lovely introduction. And I'm so happy to be here and speak to your community. Awesome. Great. So I'm going to uh, hand over the reins to you and uh, it is yours. And I'll keep track of Q&A and chat and point out anything that pops up. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. A oh, very good evening. And thank you so much for committing your time. And today we are going to be discussing how to get more clients. It's a burning question, isn't it? Whatever we are doing, whatever we are learning, there's always this one thing that is hanging that is how to get more clients. And I'll try to you know, solve that burning question today, how to get more clients. And I, am, I would be looking for feedback to understand that how did you like the session? What did you learn from it? So as Supriya asked, I would love to know where are you from? And I see a lot of people commenting from Chennai, from Delhi, from Tamil Nadu, from Bareilly, from Noida. All right. And keep the answers coming in. Where are you joining from? And what is that one thing that you're looking for today? Okay, Himachal, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Ludhiana, Navi Mumbai. I think we have the all of India today with us. Welcome everyone. I'll just share my screen. One second. All right, like I said, we are going to start with that burning question that is how to find more clients. And I'll try to justify answering this burning question. And honestly, I have to tell you a few things before I start. Number one, I would really like to talk to you across the session because I would want it to be interactive. I would be prompting you to put some comments in the chat and just support me when I ask questions. Tell me what you feel about a certain thing when I ask questions. 
Second, I'll be very honest throughout the presentation. Wherever I talk about myself, please note that I'm trying to tell you the story of how I made it possible for myself and it can be replicated for you. I'm not here to boost as to what I have done and what has worked for me. It is rather a way for me to communicate to you that see this thing is possible and it is doable if it is followed in the right way. And across the presentations, I won't really share things that are unheard of. The, you might have heard about these strategies. You might have learned it from your mentors. The one thing that I'm going to do differently today is give you a new perspective to the same strategies that you might have heard of. So let's get started. And before we start the presentation, there is one question that I want to ask from you. And that is that, why do you want to find more clients? Before I answer the burning question, you tell me, why do you want more clients? Let's see what are the answers that come. Okay, to generate more revenue, more business, grow myself and my wallet, to get a stable income, to learn, all right, for business, clients help get more business and references to scale my business, learn to make more money. All right, to serve more. I like that answer, MR, to business, to become popular. All right. Okay, so I see a common pattern in everybody's answers. And I think that is the most common answer, right? You would be like, what are you asking? Like, isn't that even a question that why do I want to find more clients? Obviously, I want more money. What kind of question is that? Is that what you're thinking right now? But I have to tell you that there is one thing and I would, you know, I started my business back in 2019 and I saw consistent success only in Jan 2023, which is just six months away. And you know, what was the reason? It was because I was chasing money all this while when I started my business. The moment I stopped chasing money, the money started chasing me. I'll say that again. I was chasing money across my business. And the moment I stopped chasing money, the money started chasing me. We have to find out that what exactly is there that we are trying to get more people. Growing business is one thing. But when we always focus on the revenue, there is a slight shift that happens. And what is that shift? Now, all of you today, majorly, everyone said that you're trying to grow your wallet, you're trying to get more money, you're trying to grow more business. A very few people said that learning, scaling up, our, one of the answers that I really loved was in the middle is to service more people. See, there is a bad cycle. You would always say, I want more money, I want to grow more business. You would work with clients that are troublesome. And trust me, all the troublesome clients would give you less money. Because you want more money, you would be like, oh, a new client is coming. They're paying 10,000. It's okay, bring it on. I'll go to more clients. Another client is coming. They're paying 15,000. Oh, that's a little more. Bring it on. And in that cycle, you would never know. You have 15 clients now, no time to yourself, completely burnout. And then you sit to yourself and you're like, I'm giving up. Business is not for me. I don't want to do the business. And that's how you start giving up and you feel that, oh, I'm not meant for business. There is a very slight shift we will do here, which will bring us to the good cycle. Change your why. When I asked that, why do you want more clients? Don't say that I want to bring more money. That is a byproduct. When you get more clients, definitely the revenue is coming in. Change your why in a way. Let's say my why is I only want to work four hours a day. When I want to work four hours a day, I'm going to attract good clients. Clients that give me more money, value my content, and at the same time, do not nag me back and forth day and night, and then I'm going to scale up. So this is going to be working with five clients, getting 50,000 from each client, just an assumption, and then having enough time to spend that family with friends or whatever we would want to do, and then scale up. So just a small shift that what is your why. When you focus on the money, it's just the money and we enter the bad cycle. We want more money, bad clients, and then we give up. So to move to the good circle, what do we have to do? We have to change our why. So do you promise me today that after the session, you'll go and you'll change your why? 
you'll think about why do you want more clients? Don't worry, I'm not a motivational speaker. I'll be taking you to the strategies for sure. But it's important for that small shift is because I'll give you a world of strategies. You go to YouTube, probably you don't need this session. You have all the strategies on YouTube. But somebody on YouTube wouldn't tell you that what will make those strategies work. And this is what worked for me. It took me 2.5 years to start becoming profitable because I was chasing money. And that put me in a bad place. So do you promise me, if you promise me to try, promise that yes, after the session, we are going to think about what is our why. Thank you, Praveen. Just give me quick promises and that will give me energy to move forward. All right, keep them coming. I love it. All right, moving forward. So today what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be dividing the presentation into a process and the procedure. See, there is a process in achieving one thing and then is the execution, which I said is the strategy. So let's move forward and see that what is the way to achieve this good cycle of clients. We've you know, stabilized the fact that we need to be in the good cycle of clients, but how to do that? Like I said, we'll have the process first and then we are going to proceed. If you understand the process, then you can use any strategy in the world. No matter what it is, you pick up any strategy. If you know the process, you're going to be able to proceed with any strategy that you want. Today, I'm going to be sharing five strategies, but majorly towards the first half of the session, I'm going to focus on the process for sure. All right. The process that I have and that I follow in my company is content, relationship, and retainer. I'm going to explain each one of them one by one. And with every process that I explain, I'm going to add my own stories so that you are able to understand that how it has been done in real life. When we talk about content, it is about showing up more to be in front of people so that people know about you. When we talk about relationships, it is more to talk to people, develop a relationship. Nobody cares who is behind the Fiverr and the Upwork profile. Who's behind that logo? We don't know. Today, you know, my name is Manmeet Kaur. What if I change my name to Melissa Cordor and I create a profile and, and I want to outsource business to other people? Nobody would know that an Indian is outsourcing other Indians. They would feel that, oh, I've got an international client. So on Fiverr and Upwork, we don't really know what is behind the picture. And especially in places where AI is developing so much, we don't know what's true, what's not. Only in this session where you're able to hear me live, you know there's a living, breathing person talking to you. So that is why relationship is where you get to talk to people in some way rather than just behind, hiding behind a profile. And then is retainer. Why do I talk about a retainer? Is because there is always a little hunt of clients every month. And with retainer, it becomes easier to move forward when we have a pipeline of clients, right? So we are going to moving, we will be moving forward with the first process, which is the content. Okay. So when we talk about content, you can choose any, and of course, I think the biggest advantage that we have here is that you're learning how to write content. Nobody, no profession can follow this process best other than you guys because you're already learning how to write best content. I'm going to be sharing a very beautiful story with you, all right? So there was this man, uh, Paul Walker. He bought about 200 products from eBay and he got those products uh, $1 each. I suppose. And this is this story has been documented in one of the TED Talks that I, I can link to you later on. And while this man, he just wanted to test, you know, that do stories work? Does story work for anyone? So he picked up 200 products from eBay, $1 each. That means he's invested about $200 into these products that he's bought. Now he searched for about 200 authors. And I'm sure this man had the skill of talking to people. Somehow, without paying any kind of money, this man agreed 200 authors to write one story each for those products. 
Now, at the end of the day, this man has 200 products and he has 200 stories. Now, what he did, he linked one story with one product and he uploaded it back on eBay. And this time he increased the price, of course. He just wanted to test that whether this is going to work, whether, whether people are going to be convinced with the written content of the product this time, the story of the product this time. One of the products sold for about 20 to $30. And I know the kind of thought you would have in your mind that, you know, it's a one-off product, it's a one lucky product, it's being sold. Now, this man, by selling all the 200 products, he made a whooping profit of $8,000. I'm talking about the profit. I'm not talking about the revenue. He made a profit of $8,000. I don't even know how to calculate an ROI. That is when you put the investment in and then you get the money out. Now, this is the power of stories. And you have to utilize these storytelling powers in your content every day. Now I know one more thing you would come to me with is, I don't know how to do storytelling. I don't have any stories. Where do I get stories from? Trust me, everybody has stories. What are stories? Do you hear comedians? Do you watch comedy shows? I'm a big fan of comedy shows. Whenever I'm free, whenever I'm stressed out, I go to Amazon Prime, I go to Netflix, and I look for comedy shows. All you have to do is, once you're going to bed, just take five minutes of your time, close your eyes and recall your day. Just recall whatever happened. Whichever are the good moments and, you know, moments that could help someone from your day, just note them down. For example, at this moment, I know my camera is flickering. When I go, I sleep, I'll just note it down that, you know, the camera was flickering. And maybe I can create a story out of it tomorrow on my social media where I talk about how testing is very important before a session. And maybe another story could be, even if you test, tech is bound to go wrong. There's a story right there. But if I don't write it down right now, you can pick up your phone, write it down in your notepad or on your system, in your email, wherever you want. But if today I don't write down this moment, I'm going to forget tomorrow. What is social media content? It is your observations. It is your thoughts. It is what you're experiencing that you're showing in front of people. Content is also a way to show your knowledge. You put your knowledge in front of people. Why are we using content as a pillar in our process is because we go to people and we say that, you know, hey, I can work for you and this is what I can do for you. It is going to take you a little bit time to convince that person on what is the value that you bring to the table. But what if that person walks to you looking at your content every day, looking at your case studies every day, and then that person tells you that, hey, I love the things that you're putting up on your social media. I'd love to work with you. That would be when people start approaching you, right? So the first process pillar that we have is content. We have to start producing content through storytelling. Storytelling is very important. Writing cold content on your social media saying that, hi, I'm creating a three-day masterclass. Would you like to join in? Is not going to cut through. Rather, you can say that, you know, I've put all my experience into this three-day masterclass that is coming up, coming up. I'm really nervous. I really don't know what would happen. And I'm really looking forward. Let's see how it goes. And if you want to know more, just DM me and we'll catch up. Now, in this situation, people might contact you. People might be curious to see what you're doing. But in the first one, it's all up to them. That's a direct sale. They might contact you or they might not contact you. So we will not be producing cold salesy content. Information, valuable content, which gives the other person the hint that you're a person of knowledge and authority to create inbound leads. And we are experts at that. You are the best kind of people when it comes to content creation, right? This is the easiest pillar of the process that we are following. The second process that we would be following is relationship. Now, when it comes to relationship, when I talk about relationships, I mean personal branding. 
Why do I say that? I'll ask you a few examples and you let me know whether you are aware of those things or not. Okay. So how many of you know Pixel Track? Just say a yes if you know Pixel Track. And if you don't, just write a no. How many of you know Pixel Track? Okay, I see a few yeses coming in, a lot of yeses coming in, and a few noes coming in. Okay, the noes have started increasing. All right. How many of you know Digital Deepak? Okay. A lot more yeses coming in. Okay, one more question. How many of you know Ikwomi? Okay, a few yeses and a lot more noes than the first one as well. How many of you know sort of Jen? <laughs> okay, a lot more yeses coming in. Okay, a few noes as well. Okay, I hope Supriya doesn't catch me for this one. How many of you know uh, Upgrade Consulting? Okay, I think a lot of people know because of course, you know, that's your mentor. But the point, of, and of course, you know Supriya Jain, right? Yeah, so a lot of what I'm getting at is that your name works more than your business brand does. You might have a business brand, but when people know you, it's, they know you because it's your name. Now, tomorrow, if you were to go to Facebook and you were to put your logo, Let's say that uh, me and Supriya, Supriya puts her own picture, she puts her own name, and she has her own bio where people can contact her. I, on the other hand, I'm putting WebEasy as the logo, I'm putting WebEasy as the business name page, and I'm putting a banner which tells about my work. I am 100% sure more business is going to come to Supriya. It's because people trust people. You cannot communicate with a logo. You can communicate with a living, breathing person. You really don't know what's going on behind that profile, especially in the age of AI. And that's why I never, never recommend Fiverr or Upwork or any such hideous sites. It's always using your own name and building relationships with people. You create good content, you create good value, and you use your own name, right? Okay, so this is the second part of the process that is building relationships through your own name that is personal branding. Third is retainer. Now, why do I prefer a retainer is because when I started business back in 2019, I was doing websites. I was creating WordPress websites. Now, that is sort of a one-time business, right? You create a website, the business is over with the client, and then you go on hunting another client. And there is also a period where I move into working in the business rather than on the business. There's a very slight difference. When you're working in the business, that means you're doing everything. When you're working on the business, that means you're getting more business, you're working a little bit, and a little bit you're getting help by outsourcing or by your team. Now, if you are able to get clients that are retainer basis, let's say there is a client who needs regular blog writing every month. There is a client who needs social media content every month. Or maybe there is a client who writes newsletters on LinkedIn and needs two newsletters every month. If you get this type kind of a client, and let's say, you know, you set your goal that I want to reach one lakh in a month, and you decide I'm going to charge 20,000 or 30,000 from one client or 50,000 from one client. On the basis of what you charge one client and your monthly goal is you can decide how many clients do you want to search now and then keep creating content, keep building relationships and keep scaling up. Retainer makes it easy to get more clients and to scale up because every month you are not on a hunt for clients. To build an offer, to build such an offer where you can get retaining clients is just three elements. One, it should solve a problem through your service. Second, the solution needs to be there for a consistent period of time. Every month, you'll be sol solving a little bit of that problem. Third, your skill should make them money. It should bring them a little bit of money in their pocket as well. So that's the process that we've covered in the first half. That is the content, the relationship, and the retainer. And if it's good, let me know, and we'll move forward. Should we move forward?
Okay, great. Okay, one second. Okay. Today I'm going to be sharing five ways to find more clients. And I know find more international clients, right? That's what we are looking for. See, the process is going to remain the same. We have to show up in front of people consistently, even in front of the international audience. No matter what kind of clients are we trying to get, the process, the game of the process is building trust. If you are able to build your trust in front of the people, then you will be able to get consistent international clients easily. Now, I'll give you a very funny story. Yesterday, you know, I was speaking to someone with one of the client. There's a little bit of up and down and things are not going that pretty smooth. I was just telling this colleague of mine, I said that, you know, all the clients I work with can sit in one room and they would know each other. And they're all from US. Now, why has this happened? Because I was showing in front of them consistently. My content was showing in front of them consistently. And because one or two of them liked my work, the referral played its game. So all you have to do is you have to get that first or second client. And then, and then deliver so bloody good that all your business is built on referrals. I don't know. I do not do any cold outreach. I do not run any ads. I do not send any loom videos at this moment. All I'm doing is my content is consistently showing in front of people. And now I'm going to tell you how to make sure that your content shows consistently in front of people. You just need that one, two or three clients. And after that, I promise you, those people are going to get you business if you are good. Let's move forward. The first thing is WhatsApp story marketing. I know, I know, I would get this thing. We want international clients. What would WhatsApp story marketing do? We are sitting here in India. How would international clients see the stories? Trust me, we are in India. We have a big family. Your relatives, 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 kisi ki chachi, kisi ke mama, kisi ke tauji, somebody Bacha is in foreign country. I'll give you my first story of the international client through WhatsApp story marketing. So when I was launching my business, I had only one number, which was my personal number, and all contacts were saved in that number. And I would put on my WhatsApp story saying that, you know, hey, I'm launching my business. Hey, I've quit my job. And the, it took me four months to create my first website. When I did that, I blasted on WhatsApp with a lot of stories saying, oh, I've, you know, launched my business. My business is my baby. And this is my website. Give me your feedback and different stories. One of my relatives messaged me congratulating me on the website and said that, you know, hey, we are looking for someone to design a website. Would you be happy to do it? I was like, yeah, for sure. That person was in Dubai and he was working in a company. And that's where I got my first client. Uh, that's where I got my first client for $150 for a website. That's an international client through a WhatsApp marketing story. I know a lot of times we put a lot of stories and we feel, oh, nobody responded. No client came. The game is in compounding. The game is in consistency. I, I mean, I can vouch on this. Nobody is responding to you today, but they are all watching you. Do you know those glasses aunties? Whenever you walk out of the house, they're watching where you're going, who you're going with. That's your WhatsApp audience. Just look at the number of people who've seen your stories. Trust me, they're not responding today, but they are listening to you and they're listening to your stories and you're creating a very strong brand recall value through your WhatsApp stories. Tomorrow, if they were to sit on a table and somebody would say that, you know, I'm working on my business, I'm looking at content and so and so, suddenly one of your charity is going to say, oh, you know, that person puts a lot of stories. I'll just ask him or I'll just ask her. And it is going to work like a charm. The only thing is you're going to keep a little patience while you're doing this. The game is in consistency, patience, and compounding. If you're able to do that, I know it's difficult. I'm not saying it's easy. When you're trying to grow your business, it feels like, you know, when will I get the client? When will I get the client? I know that. But if you're able to keep a little bit of patience and do this consistently, I guarantee you, you will see a pipeline, pipeline of clients where you feel that, oh, oh my God, I have to say a no now. I'm not able to do it. I'll, since, you know, I've planned, uh, like we've planned this workshop, every time I put a WhatsApp story, I'm taking screenshots just to show you that how it works and how I'm doing it for myself. 
I'll show you the first screenshot. Now, this is a story where I put a reel out of my YouTube video. And you would see the person has commented that, you know, this person really likes the content I've put in. And after this, we might not have had a conversation which moved to business. But then at least I know this person is watching. This is where I got a response. Most of the times you might not get a response as well. Now here you would see, we just did a podcast with one of the fellow members. I have two numbers now, of course, one business number and one personal number. You can see on my business number, 43 people have watched because it's a relatively new number. And here 83 people have watched. Now in total, it's about more than 120 people. Okay, they did not respond to me, but they are watching. Everybody is watching, remember. Everybody in your contacts is watching and you never know who has links with who. Somebody from your family, from your friends, friends, family is in the foreign country and that's your gateway to international clients. That's a slight indirect route and I'll tell you why it would work. When you go outreach, you have to build the trust of the person through the conversations, through the sales calls, talking to them. But the reference that you're going to get from this, those, you know, those... Um, Relatives of yours, when they are going to recommend you, that person will have much more trust on you. And that works like a charm. And here is another story. Now, this person did not contact me for a long period of time, but she showed my story and she started talking to me and the conversation built there. So that's how WhatsApp story marketing works. If you can pick this up and consistently, whatever you are doing, you do not really need to plan your content. Whatever you're putting in, just one to two stories every day that talks about your business is going to build a really good brand recall value in their heads. And you might know that in the next week, you'd be telling Supriya, hey, I got my first international client from the WhatsApp story. So just do it. Do not procrastinate. Go out today. Maybe, you know, take a screenshot of this and just put it on your WhatsApp saying, hey, I learned something great today. I'm on my way to build my business and I'll soon be cracking my first client. Just do that. Just put it on your WhatsApp story and see people will start recognizing to what you're doing. The second thing that I have for you is the Facebook page versus profile. I'll just share my screen and show you what I mean by this. This is a way of why I keep telling that use your personal brand instead of your business brand. I'm going to show you my Facebook business page and I'm going to show you my Facebook business profile as my own profile as well. And you would see that what is the level of interactions that I get in both places. All right, so I'll just share my screen again. Here we are. So this is my profile. I'll open my profile and I'll open my business page as well. Okay, I changed it to my own name. Is because we've decided that we'll not be using the business brand. We'll be using my own name to grow the company services as well. But if you see here, now this post that I put up, I've got at least eight to nine likes here or engagement here. People are definitely, you know, commenting and responding. This is my own profile. This is not a business page. This is a profile. As we go down, you will see here as well. People are looking at my content and people are commenting as well. Again, if you see posts like these, whatever post I make, whether it's a business related post or whether it is a personal post, I get interaction. Now, if I go to the business page, this is the business page I created, you would hardly see any interaction happening. Now here, that's just one like. If I go here, there's no like here. If I go here again, no like, no comment. No like, no comment. The same video that got eight likes and about two comments on my own profile has no interaction here. This has no interaction. This again has about two to three interactions. Now I'll tell you the reason why this happens. We have to take care of one fact that Facebook views us as a person. Our profile is one individual person speaking to another individual person. Whereas our business page is an entity, a business that is trying to work with other business. Now, if I put out a post today, it will show it to the thousand people in my profile because it's Manmi speaking to Supriya two people speaking to each other. But when we put it out on a business page, Facebook would only show it to about 20% or 40% of your followers. And that's where the difference comes. And that is how if you start using your Facebook profile, instead of your business page, you would see much more 
people coming in because again your connectivity your people in your account would start looking at your content there is one way that is to show in front of international clients i would be sharing when i move to linkedin when we move to linkedin oh yes i just saw the comment uh, yes i've read those emails as well the circle of influence absolutely that's like a game changer when we move to linkedin i'll show you one particular thing as to how to show the content to the international clients and the same is for facebook and the same is for linkedin so i'll just share my screen again and we'll move forward but start using your own profile so that you get more and more interactions is because facebook when considers your business page as a business it restricts your reach whereas it doesn't restrict your profile the third is communities and groups now when we are in business we are using a lot of tools how many tools do you use like when you know you're doing anything you're writing content or for example you're building your website what are the kind of tools that you're using you can name any like for example i use elementor i use zenlur i use wordpress what are the kind of tools you are using okay vinod says divi builder medium okay grammarly okay system okay grammarly elementor pro grammarly canva gpt okay okay tell me one thing have you ever tried to become a part of their communities just give me a yes for why and no for n uh, by communities i do not mean just joining the facebook group i mean getting into their calls that they do have you ever tried to do that yes so that see you know how did i get a few clients international clients is by being active in these communities if you talk about elementor elementor has a group if you go to communities.elementor.com if i hope the url is not wrong i'll fetch the right url these people have live calls every month where they bring a speaker they bring a focus topic and the speaker talks to other people and every elementor community every uh, elementor country has a community of its own i started joining elementor communities by attending these sessions then when i started attending these sessions i got an opportunity to be a speaker at one of these events when they were doing their first summit i applied and i got selected and then the entire international audience heard me as a speaker in their first summit and from there i applied to be the community manager for india and then i got selected again and now a lot of people from india and abroad look at my profile as the element of community leader why don't you try to utilize all these tools if you look at zenlur as well zenlur community members also do that's another tool that's another lms tool those people also do a lot of live calls so whatever communities you are part of if you can start attending their live calls there's another group that i know of they also do live calls every month every week try showing up try to become part of these live calls search for these groups search for these communities everybody has a group on meetup everybody has a group on um there's one another website i'll search for that these communities are meeting live in a zoom room like this every week every month whatever tools you are using try to get into these tools and start meeting people i did one presentation for a wordpress community in canada how did i get to them because i was attending these live calls of elementor and i saw that somebody is looking for speaker again and that is going to be my another strategy which i'll share with you but start you know digging in the tools that you're using start looking at their social pages start going to their career pages start going to their community pages and dig into the meetings that they are doing every community today has live calls in some way or the another start being active in these communities and you would get approach all of these are foreign tools mostly are foreign companies you would be in front of the international audience if you were active in these groups that's my third strategy and the fourth strategy that i have is one second yeah. 
Let me just move the presentation. Yeah. So the fourth strategy is LinkedIn and I would show you how to do it on LinkedIn. Let me share my screen once again. All right. So LinkedIn by far is the most important platform when it comes to B2B. And when it comes to B2B, you have to use a platform where people know that it is going to be about business. On Facebook, if you try to go DM someone, if you try to use outreach, it is more of a platform where people are hanging out, sharing each other, sharing pictures. But if today I'm going to be messaging somebody on LinkedIn, people would know that, okay, she's here for business. And secondly, LinkedIn is the best platform when it comes to organic reach. No other platform is going to give you the kind of organic reach that LinkedIn would give. I'll just quickly share my profile. And it is the same thing that you have to do. You have to show up consistently, put your content consistently, and make sure that you show up in front of people. Now, to reach the international audience, and that I was saying was one way that I would show you when we reach LinkedIn, you can do this in Facebook as well, but the best thing that is going to work is on LinkedIn. For example, let's say I am searching for doctors. Okay, so I'm going to write doctors here. I'm searching for the keyword doctors. And then I'm going to be using the search filter. And what I want is I want to reach the people of the foreign countries, right? Here we have all sorts of filters. I'm going to go to all filters. I do not want to filter by groups. I want to filter by location. One second. Let's go to people. Yeah, so when we go to filter by people, there is an option to select the second and the third. Now, what does second and third mean? Second means that people who are connections of connection. For example, I am connected to Supriya on LinkedIn and she is connected to someone else. So that someone else will be second connection for me. Then another person is connected to that second person. That would be a third connection for me. So what we're looking at mostly is second and third connections because first is already added in your connections. And then here is the location. Now select the location that you want. When we talk about international clients, let's not say all international clients. Let's say only Canada, only US, only UK, whatever you would want. I'll select US here. And because I'm looking for healthcare, now this is a search I've done already. That's why these topics are coming up. You could search for any topic that you want. You can even write here what is the topic you're looking for. Search for healthcare. If there is any current company you would like to select, if your audience is maybe founder, CEO, or the kind of audience you're looking at. And then there are multiple categories here as well, service categories. Let's say I'm looking for people in consulting only, or maybe coaching and mentoring. I want doctors who are coaches in the United States where I can write content for them. Let's say that's the kind of targeting I'm trying to do. Once I do all of this, I'm going to click on show results. As I see results, there are 106 results, all right? 106 is not a less number. If you keep filtering in the best way, you would get more and more people. Right now, I just did a very small research, but when you spend your time, you'll get many more people here. All we have to do is, let's say, for example, I open this doctor's profile. I study a little about them, looking at what they're doing. You'll have to spend one to two minutes to get good clients. Good takes efforts. Right. So you'll just have to do a little bit of work. So you look at their profile, you see what they are doing and just send them a connection request. Just click on more, click on connect and click on add a note and add a small note here. OK, let's say, for example, if I read here, transformational financial and success coach, holistic advisor. And then let's read their about section. Uh, what matters to you? You've made smart choices financial portfolio that will help your life with confidence. Let's say I'm going to message this person that, uh, hey, Dr. Douglas, I, uh, I would love to connect with you. I could really relate with your bio where you say that, you know, we should have a portfolio where we should live with confidence because when there's no confidence, what, what's that kind of a life? Like, this is what I'm coming up with, but you would want to choose your words and you're the best at it. So you choose good words and you send a connection request where the person comes to know you've done the job of spending a little bit of time 
on the profile by reading about them. Just send the connection request and forget it. Don't outreach, don't do anything and only post content. If you want to move one step further, send them a lead magnet in their DM, start uh, talking to them by building conversations, start outreaching them on LinkedIn. You're happy to do that and you can take it to the level two. My strategies are a little bit smaller. My strategies are a little bit um, time taking and it takes a lot of patience. But if you would want, just send 10 to 15 connection requests every day. But at the same time, keep posting consistent content so that when these people are added to your profile, they keep looking at your content. If you have to post content, then I would suggest at least one post every two days, that is 15 posts in a month, plus four newsletters, that is one newsletter going out. So I very recently started, I think a month or two ago, a newsletter, and I already have about 190, 203. We are talking, I'm looking at it. Yesterday it was 193. I have 203 subscribers to the newsletter. Now, this is happening is because LinkedIn is one of the platform which will give you an organic reach to the best of its capacity more than any other software will. So make sure you utilize LinkedIn. And the last strategy, the last strategy that I have for you is speaking engagement. Look out for speaking engagement as much as you can. And this would be a byproduct of all the strategies that I've shared with you. Like today, I'm speaking at this session, you know about me, what I'm doing or how I'm doing. Similarly, when you speak at another session, people try to understand that you are a person of knowledge and authority. So if you ask me in one line that what is the best way to get clients or for that matter, international clients is produce content that is of authority, produce content that shows your knowledge, that shows your authority, and start showing up in front of people. Start showing up like a living, breathing person rather than just a person behind the profile. Start using your personal brand and start getting in part of the communities. I do have screenshots. Now, this is one event that I just candidly applied to speak for. This was, again, an international event. And you can see the kind of comments I'm getting. These people might not have become my clients, but they know about me. I am in their minds. I have left an impression where if they would, you know, speak about storytelling, personal branding, they would remember me. Just look out for events. I also told you about an event where I spoke to a Canadian community and I was teaching them how to grow a WordPress business two years back from now. Two years ago, I'm sorry. So this happened is because I'm a part of communities. I keep talking to people. I keep going to these live calls. And when I approach people that, you know, hey, can I do a session? I think I would like to speak on this topic. People would say yes. So start using speaking engagements here on the YouTube channel. You would see there's a section which is the featured speaker and interview. These are all sessions where I have spoken. And this is the elemental talk that I'm talking about that I took for the first time. What did I do? I applied for it. This is again an international space where I spoke. How did I do it? I'm part of communities. I meet people. They talk to me. And just slightly in the conversation, I tell them that, you know, hey, maybe I can talk about this topic. Would you like that? And then they say yes, because nobody would say no to a person who's ready to speak free of cost for their audience in their topic. And when people see you as a person of trust and authority, they would realize all the people who are listening to you in that session would feel and be able to gauge your knowledge and authority. Now, if you sit in a session and you keep talking about something that is not relating to people, or if you keep boosting about yourself, that would tell people that, you know, you are not here to spread value. You are here to tell about yourself. You would make your mark is only when you provide value. And that will happen is when you can share your knowledge, a piece of your content with people which can help them immediately. Now I'm sure out of everything that I share today, something, 1% of this is going to benefit you immediately. 
if I come to the session and I do not share something that can help you immediately, there's no good of me coming here as a speaker. And that should be your thought. Whenever you go to a session, make sure that you share something of value that helps them immediately. And you just have to replicate all these strategies in front of the international audience to get international clients. And how would that happen? Start talking to people, start leveraging, start leveraging that the tools that you're a part of, start becoming a part of the communities and LinkedIn is such a powerful tool. Add international people in front of your profile and show them content. They it would be of no harm, you're not charging them, they're not paying you, There's that's just a win-win. They're getting value free of cost, you are getting their attention free of cost. It is only going to be a good metric out of the algorithm if you follow the process of content using storytelling, relationship using personal brand and then retainer is of course an offer that makes them money as well and i think that's it from me i hope it helped you out and i'm happy to take any questions thank you so much manmeet that was really uh, informative and uh, you know this is why i think we work together so well because i find so much resonance in <laughs> what you say and what i say especially that point right where you talked about reach out to your network this is what i've been harping on from right. day one that you know your relationships the people you know who they know those are really really important things to build business because as content writers our focus shouldn't be on finding a hundred clients it should be finding right. five good ones and then uh, figuring out how do we get the maximum lifetime value out of them. So I think this was a brilliant session. And LinkedIn is, of course, like my favorite platform <laughs> to be on. So uh, thank you so much. This is amazing. Uh, there are a few questions uh, in the Q&A box. Do you want to yes, uh, absolutely. start with them? Yes. So I see four questions possible to share slides. Yes, absolutely. I can do that. I'll share it with Supriya. How to close your first client? Follow the same strategy, show it in front of people. That's what I said. One more thing that I'd like to add is that I did not include in my presentation. You are your best promoter. No Facebook ad, no marketing methodology, no marketing strategy is going to promote you. Then you can promote yourself. Now, this might come out as cheesy, but you know, when I started, I did not refrain from talking about myself, no matter where I was. I was at a family wedding. I talk about what business I do. I was at a family function. I would talk about what business I do. And I, you know, closed my brother, my cousin brother as a client by talking him out of this is what I can do for you. And that's how I started my business. I got three of my cousin cousins to be my clients at a very small price, of course, because I wanted experience. They wanted work. Again, you know, don't chase the price uh, for a small front. So, and that time I was working, I didn't quit my job then. So I was trying to build up that frame. I got three of my cousins to be my own clients before I quit my job and I started working for them. So be your best ad advocator and you would get your first client from your family, like Supriya says, from your circle of influence, from the people who know you. That's where you're going to get your first client. Okay. Uh, then we have how to craft an ideal customer profile for your business. That's, I think, a very lengthy question. <laughs> it requires a lot more in depth and maybe some other time I'd like to answer that because it would bring a lot of things in. What is your offer? What is your price? What you're doing? It's uh, a very uh, broad topic. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and if you want to answer to that question, I think we did another uh, webinar where we did cover a bit of it. That was with Chitra. So you can go back to the channel and um, watch that webinar and you'll get some answer to that. Okay. And then is how can newbies start posting in LinkedIn, LinkedIn and how to choose niche? So uh, there's nothing about new or old. You start a profile and you start posting because LinkedIn would start giving reach to people who are consistent on the platform. You know, that's the food for the platform. If you post consistent content, the platform grows. So there's nothing about when and how should you post or whether you're new or how much time it has been. Just start posting content. And how to choose niche again, I would say this is a broad topic and I'm sure it would take some more time to help you out uh, how to choose your niche. And to begin with, I would say that in the beginning, if you're just starting out, uh, it is not really important that you pick a niche right away because niche is something that you should enjoy. 
For example, if I tell you today that you know doctors are a great market, start writing for them. But what if you do not understand the doctor's industry, you don't understand the terminology, and you don't enjoy writing for them? What's the point of choosing that as a niche? So begin with different niches that are of interest to you, and then slowly and gradually start narrowing down from there. I hope that helps. Uh, hi, Manmeet. While the focus was on international clients, just reconfirming all these tactics would get to domestic clients as well. Absolutely. They would get to the domestic client before it gets to the international clients, but it would. Uh, was with this personal branding strategy work without a portfolio of blogs, one golden tip to choose a client with a mediocre portfolio. See, that's what I said. I did not talk about the portfolio at all. You don't need a portfolio. Your content is your portfolio. People do not really need to see. Your first client doesn't need to see who you've worked with. They need to have your trust. And I think that is a very good question. Thank you for asking this. That when you get the first client, they will hire you because of the trust they see in you, because of the knowledge that they see in you. They will not hire you on the basis of your case studies. The other clients that come in your pipeline will hire you on the basis of your case studies. But at first, the second client will come from trust. And where will the trust come, come from? Either from recommendation, referrals, or from the content that you create. So you don't need a portfolio. You just need good content that provides value. And I hope that helps. <laughs> Okay, I think I should mark it that I've answered it slide, is it? I wasn't doing that. <laughs> okay. Uh, there are many experts in my niche, how to create content that stands out and increases engagement. The answer to this is that make it relatable. Just make it relatable to the person who's reading it. If you write a piece of content, just understand that how would the person relate with it? If they are able to feel, you know, oh, this has happened with me as well. And when you would follow the, you know, closing your eyes, going through your day, five minutes, and just recalling everything, that's a real life experience. When you create stories out of real life experience, it is going to be relatable and your niche will be able to relate to that for sure. How to get back client, the one I lost due to some reason. Should I show them a regular text, even if he's not a client? I'm not able to get this question. Should I show them my regular text regularly, even if he's not a client? Uh, I think what you're trying to ask is that you were working with a client, now you're not working with them for some reason, and whether you should show them your work or not. So I would again reiterate the same thing, that instead of approaching them directly, just keep showing them in front of them through your content so that they can see that what kind of a value you're providing to your other clients, even if you were not able to do that back then. Okay, how do I onboard clients, contracts? Should we charge in advance? Yes, there are a lot of things that we follow and this could be one another topic in itself. Yes, of course, there, I have never dealt with a client that is not paid after the work is done. And I would suggest that maybe go with a 50-50 payment that we tell them that we give them 50% advance, start the work and then the rest 50%. Okay, the most common challenges I have encountered while getting international clients, how did you overcome and convert them? Okay, so I think the most common problems I've inquired uh, while uh, hiring international clients is always been that niche has been a problem for me is because I'm dealing with different kinds of clients. Apart from that, what I follow is I follow a two method methodology. One session, I just ask them questions. What do they want? What's their goal? And all sorts of things that I can learn about them. Second meeting is where I tell them what my plan is. And I never share my price until they are ready after the entire plan that this looks good. Now tell me your price. I don't share the price until then. Apart from the niche factor, I've not had problems is because these people are again coming from my trust factor. They've seen my content or maybe they've, uh, they have come through a person I've worked with from another referral from another client. And niche is the problem is because when you're working with different sets of clients, for example, if I'm working with a real estate client and a lawyer comes in, the lawyer would ask me, hey, do you have any other laws you've worked with? My answer is going to be a no. 
and I don't know how to justify it. So maybe getting to a narrower point where I might say I work with coaches, I might not say I'm working with a health and wellness coach, but I might say I'm working with coaches. So that helps. Niche has been the only problem. And how do I overcome it? I, is I show my knowledge and I show my research what I've done for them. Whenever I go back with my plan, I tell them that where have I researched for their industry, what competitors I've looked through, what is working in their industry, what is not working. So through my research, I show them that how can I be a good value to them? Okay, I think there are a lot of questions coming in. <laughs> um, what is your niche? Which way do you get maximum reach? LinkedIn post or website? Definitely LinkedIn post. I do not even get the time to sit on LinkedIn and you know communicate with other profiles. If I do that, my profile would, would start going you know viral very soon, but I'm not able to do that. So definitely LinkedIn. My niche is that I work with uh, coaches and uh, other consultants where I help them get more leads through content and through Facebook ads. I write blogs and who are my target audience and what is relevant. Um, I write blogs and who are my target audience and what is relevant content that I should post in LinkedIn. So what is your target audience is something that you can decide and then I think I can help you out. Uh, how do I know my content is perfect? Okay, so there is no perfect or, you know, correct or incorrect, uh, incorrect content. How would you know? Yes, there are blueprints that is to be followed to post this, you know, perfect kind of, con not perfect, consistent content. But when you start putting a content, you would see that how are people responding to it? On the basis of the interaction on your content, you would know that which content piece is working for you. How to get clients for a fresher? follow the same exact strategies that I have shared in the session and it is going to work for you. It can work for anyone. Where can we find Elementor WordPress community? Uh, go to the elementor.com and then I think there is a page for their community as well, community.elementor.com. And that is where I think you would get their community. Okay, also would these strategies work to get high ticket value client projects? Absolutely they would. Because now people are, you know, considering you a person of trust and authority. So definitely these strategies are going to work for you. I hope I've answered all questions. And if I haven't any, then I'd be happy to take it up some other time. And I would love to share my YouTube link. If you would like to follow me or listen to my content and the videos, I'll just post it uh, to Supriya and Supriya can share it with you. Yeah. I hope you liked the session. Yes, it was amazing, Manmi. Thank you so much. I have just shared the YouTube link in the chat as well. And I'm going to put it up. Uh, you guys will get a recording of the session after this. So you'll get the YouTube link in that too. Um, I personally also found a lot of stuff that I can uh, work with. I've never tried the WhatsApp story bit. So I, I, while you were talking about it, I was like, okay, this is something I really need to do. So um, I think it just goes to so, show that the more you attend these things, the more uh, insights you, know, you get and the more resonance also, right? So I don't know if um, it works with the community, but uh, I the more conversations I'm having, I feel that people who are really acing the game right who are getting into these you know multiple laps of business every year they're all following a similar strategy right they're all doing the same things and we're doing it consistently Absolutely. and that's why it's giving us results right um so i'm hoping that the community will also start learning these methods start learning that there are no shortcuts you've got to put in the work but when you do put in that work it gives you big results right so, uh, thank you for that lesson today Manmeet. Thanks so much. <laughs> absolutely yeah. thank you so much i was so so nervous i hope i was able to deliver value yes i think uh, from the comments i can see everybody's like really um uh, love the session and thank you guys for attending for being such an interactive and uh, amazing audience um brilliant and i hope you guys have a great weekend and a great friday evening i'll see you again with another webinar soon thanks thank you so much Bye -bye. thank you everyone thank you Bye-bye.
Bye-bye.